temperature relaxolotling at home, we have a special treat for you. We're going to talk about one of our unique animals here at Axolotl. My name is Kathy. We're here with our other aquarist, Natalie. And before we get started, we just want to remind you that we miss you guys, and we hope you miss us too. If you do, please go online and share your favorite photo of your time here with the hashtag #IMissMyAquarium, and then we can see all the fun memories that you had. And Um, the plants. Um, axolotls are actually amphibians. So between um, questions we get a lot are between are they a reptile or are they an amphibian? They're actually an amphibian. So um, what an amphibian is, is an amphibian is an animal that primarily stays in water when they're born. They have a tadpole larva stage and then they go through a transformation or metamorphosis onto the land. So they kind of go through being in the water and on land. So, Natalie, what? These guys seem to be all in the water. What's up with that? Yeah, so axolotls are actually unique in that way because they are what, um, they do something that is called neoteny, which neoteny means that they retain juvenile characteristics throughout their entire lives. So as you can see on our axolotls, they have two main characteristics that they will keep their entire lives that other um, reptiles or um, salamanders would actually absorb or get rid of when they reach maturity. So they have these feathery gills, which you can see right behind their heads. And then they also have this really long dorsal fin that extends almost their entire length of their body. Now, some axolotls can actually um, absorb these and become salamanders, um, but this is actually rare. So most of the time your axolotls are going to stay in this phase for their entire lives. And then how old would you say our axolotls can be? So their entire lives, how long is it to the lifespan? Um, they can live anywhere between 10 and 15 years. And how big do they get? These bottles are little, little, little bottles. <laughs> Yeah, so actually in the wild, axolotls can get up to a foot long, um, but typically in, you'll see them be uh, smaller. So they'll actually be around six inches, maybe half of what they could be in the wild. Um, but also in the wild, that's rare too. So we keep saying, you know, in their natural environment, in the wild, so what exactly is their natural habitat? Where are they from? So they're from um, a lake, a lake in Mexico. There actually used to be two lakes that they were found in, but one of them, Lake Chalco, is no longer existent. Um, so the only other lake that they're found in in Mexico is called Lake Xochimilco. Um, so this lake, even though it, they, that's where they're actually found, they're only found really in that lake. And unfortunately, they used to have such a wide population. They did a study in 1998 that found there were 6,000 per square kilometer. So that's a lot of lots. But they did the same study in 2015 and found only 35 per square kilometer. So that means that they're actually critically endangered on the, on the list of whether or not they're endangered. But they can be found pretty commonly in aquariums too. So what are some other fun things? Is this fresh water or salt water? This is fresh water. Um, so Lake Xochimilco is also a fresh water lake. Um, typically their habitat will be kind of murky, um, but they can survive in pretty much anything. They're pretty adaptable. Now, because they're amphibians, they're also what's called ectothermic, which means they cannot regulate their own body temperature. So they're dependent on their surroundings to regulate their body temperature. Now, what is the temperature of this exhibit here? This exhibit is generally between 65 and 66 um, degrees Fahrenheit, right? Which is how the temperature that they would normally be found in. So we have a lot of light coming in here, and this light is mostly for our plants. These are live plants. But axolotls are actually nocturnal, so they like to hang out in their caves where it's dark, 
which you can see they're doing now. And they have a soft sand substrate, which again is kind of reminiscent of what they would have in a natural environment. Now, Natalie, what do they normally eat? So axolotls are carnivores. So this means that they're gonna eat a lot of things uh, that they would find in their natural environment like worms, they would have small fishes, crustaceans, insects. Um, our axolotls particularly like um, shrimp. We cut up tiny pieces of shrimp. Now obviously this is not something that they would find in the wild. Um, so this is more of a tree. Also shrimp is a saltwater animal as you all may know. Um, so this is more of a treat for them. It's not something that we're going to give a lot. A lot. <laughs> So what Natalie is going to do now is she is going to give you guys a treat and she's going to go around back and feed our lottles. So we'll take them all while she goes back there. So another fun thing about axolotls is they have an amazing ability to regenerate. So they can regrow any limb that a predator might nip off of them. They can regrow their legs, their tissues, oh there we go, they can regrow even their heart muscles and it's a crazy ability that not a lot of animals have and because of that they've been very heavily studied. Oh he knows what's coming. So in the natural environment another reason why they are endangered is because the lake that they're in has slowly been shrinking like Natalie said there was normally two areas and now there's just one because there is a nearby settlement in Mexico City there's a lot of pollution <laughs> there's a lot of pollution and runoff that goes in now as amphibians they are very sensitive to water changes their skin is very permeable another thing is axolotls are as strange as it may sound, they're actually predators, the top predators in their food chain, with the only predators on them typically being birds like heron. But because again, there are people coming into the area that have introduced other animals, other larger fish, those larger fish have been coming and predated. <laughs> they've been coming eating all the axolotls, so that's kind of been another problem for them in the wild. Now they are very small, so our axolotls, while they are very, very hungry, don't eat a ton. They will typically eat one or two of these little shrimp pieces that Natalie is giving them, maybe three. You'll notice they have very large mouths and they can actually eat anything that's about the size of their mouth, the size of their head. Because of that, if you have an axolotl at home, it's typically not recommended that you have gravel substrate because they'll go ahead and eat that too. So we have some sand in here for them. And then we feed them by hand because sometimes lottles, as I said, they're predators and they can get a little nippy. We don't want anybody mistaking a limb for food. So we just want to make sure that they each get their own serving. Now while we're feeding these guys, do you guys have any questions? Not yet. All right. Well, please feel free to ask some. Axolotls come in a variety of shapes and sizes, as Natalie said. They can typically be this kind of brownish, blackish purplish color. They're also very commonly white or an albino colored. We have a question not about the axolotls but about our octopus. If okay. you guys um, know how big it is. The last time our octopus was weighed, she was about 14.7 kilograms, I believe. So, 
That's about how big she is. So Natalie, it looks like they ate very well. Yep. So um, another thing I wanted to talk to you guys about is reproduction. Um, so we actually have three axolotls, like I said in here. So we actually have two females and one male. Um, so typically in an axolotl, they're going to be sexually mature when they're between six and 12 months old. Um, then when they do um, reproduce, they are egg-laying. So our axolotls can lay anywhere between 200 and 1,000 eggs um, just in one spot. So as you can imagine, that's a lot of eggs. Um, I'm sure a lot of you, if you've been here, um, you've seen eggs at some time. Um, they will lay them, they'll attach them onto the plants, onto the rocks, um, sometimes just onto the substrate, um, just anywhere that they can attach them. Um, and then the eggs typically would um, be uh, incubated for about two to three weeks before they hatch out. We do have one question. Um, can they be cut with other tank fish or do they have to stay by themselves? So axolotls are actually pretty predatory animals. Um, in their natural environment, they are considered the apex predator there. Um, so putting them with other fish or things like that, they would probably eat them or at least um, you know, nibble at them a little bit. So we don't want to keep them with anything that could potentially be harmed by them. And then, do the axolotls have names? <laughs> our axolotls do not, I don't personally have any names for our axolotls. Natalie, do you know of any names? I, I have not names for them. <laughs> Some of our aquarists that have been here in the past, I know, have, have names for them, but unfortunately, I'm not quite sure what those names were. Well, like I do, like I said, we do have a lot of a lot of fun with them. Even if they don't have specific names, we have our lot of layer with a little lots, a lot of lots. We definitely also know their personalities. Yes. Um, as you could tell while I was feeding, there's definitely one of the three that is a little more voracious of an eater. Um, she is our largest female. She typically eats a lot more than all three combined. Um, she also lays eggs quite frequently, so she needs a lot more food to um, give herself energy for preparing those eggs. A lot of food. <laughs> and then for people tuning in right now, um, can you just explain the difference between um, a reptile and an amphibian? Awesome. And then we have a question kind of going back to the reproduction. Um, when they lay eggs, do you take them out or leave them in the exhibit? Um, typically, we'll take them out. Um, we, don't, we, don't, we don't breed them here. Um, so we don't typically allow them to reach a stage where they would become axolotls, basically. We've had some people in the past who have taken them home and raised them themselves, but it's not a, an active breeding program that we have here. All right, so if there's no more questions, we had a lot of fun with you guys here today. Um, before we go, let's talk about um, just the conservation of them yes, and why, why we talked about why they're in danger or that they are in danger so let's talk about why they're in danger mm -hmm. um, so in Mexico um, there's, a, there's a few different reasons so in Mexico um, actually roasted axolotl is considered a delicacy um, also in Japan um, so that is one reason for their dwindling numbers another reason is the contamination and just the draining of the waters of the lake complex there so we mentioned they are found in Lake Xochimilco. Um, also, the introduction of larger fish. Um, so like we said, typically um, 
axolotls were considered apex predators um, before the introduction of those larger fish. So before that, really, their only predators were larger birds, so birds like heron. They are, however, thriving in the aquarium industry and then in the scientific field as well. Like I said, they are incredible animals, both scientifically with their amazing regeneration abilities and they're incredible in terms of, you know, aesthetics and the way they look, they're so interesting. So people have them at home, have them in aquariums, and that definitely helps keep their numbers up. We do have another question. Um, why does it always look like they're smiling? That's just the way that their morphology, so the way that their body is structured. Like I said, they do have those very large mouths, so they can open up really wide and grab a bunch of food. And because they have such wide mouths, when their mouths are closed, it kind of does look like they are smiling. If you are looking for something to do, if you go online, there are a lot of fun YouTube videos where people have drawn faces on the glasses of aquarium systems to kind of give their lottles glasses and mustaches and generally make them even more as charismatic. And then Natalie, going back to your conservation message, um, what is a way our guests can help these axolotls out in the wild? I would say, if you don't mind, I can take this one. <laughs> I don't know if you guys know this, but does our gift shop sell any axolotl plush? Ooh, I don't think our gift shop currently sells any axolotl plush, but I would certainly recommend it because that would be fantastic. That would be so cute. <laughs> Definitely. Are there any other questions? We have one more question about our lovely octopus. Okay. What does an octopus eat? So our octopus specifically eats a lot of crustaceans. So we have um, lobster, crab, we have fish like herring, capelin, and occasionally squid, shrimp, just a whole wide variety of food. Good questions. All right. Is there anything else? Wonderful. Thank you so much for asking questions. We asked and you delivered, and that is fantastic. So we enjoyed spending time with you here today, and we hope to see you tomorrow. And make sure you ask a lot of questions then, too. Have a lovely afternoon. We just got one last minute question. <laughs> um, if the eggs hatched, would their babies be on their own, or would they take care of them? So axolotls Tune in again and ask a lot of questions. <laughs>